As we are working towards a proof of the completeness theorem, we uh, saw that when we talked about term structures, there were two main ob obstacles to uh, conduct a full induction uh, to show that such term structures are actually models of a given theory. Um, the one we took care of in the last lecture um, by um, looking at the completion of theories, the other obstacle was that um, when we want to take, do the inductive step for existential formulas, uh, we might run into a problem ha not having enough witnesses. So Henkin theories, uh, that's what we talk about in this lecture, take care of uh, that problem. We start with a definition of Henkin theories. We say T is a Henkin theory if for every formula Psi F X, there exists a constant C such that T proves that exists X Psi implies Psi uh, if I substitute C for X. So the T has to be uh, strong enough to supply us witnesses to existential statements. So for every existential sentence, a Henkin theory has to prove an example in form of a constant. So usually theories will not even have enough symbols to be Henkin theories, right? Because we need these constant symbols uh, before everything uh, to have uh, uh, to be a Henkin theory. But maybe we can extend a given theory to a Henkin theory. Of course, if we want to do that, we also have to worry about what do we actually add? Do we make this theory actually too powerful? So we have to keep in mind what do we actually, uh, or what are we able to prove from such a theory if we extend it to a Henkin theory? So what would such an extension look like? Well, the first thing, uh, if we just want to try and do it very naively, we could just add for every sentence, existential sentence of this form, a new constant symbol, right? We just throw this into a language, we extend our language first. Right, we add a new constant symbol C sub sigma, right? And it has to be new, so it, it did not occur in L before, right? And we so we take L and then we add the new constant symbols and each one symbol for each sentence of this form. And uh, now we so that we have the symbols, we can actually form the Hankin axioms, right, to make our theory a Hankin theory. So we collect those in a set gamma, right? So the gamma will consist of all formulas of this form. There exists x psi of x implies psi c sigma, right? That uh, constant, right? Um, plugged in for x. And then finally, we add our axioms to the theory to get a new theory t prime. This will be, of course, a theory now over a new language, the extended language L prime. One might be tempted to think now that we're done, but the problem is, of course, that since we add new symbols here, right, and we add then new formulas there, we can add these, use these symbols to actually form new formulas of this form, right, new sentence, existential sentences, which would then necessitate new uh, constant symbols in turn. So as we observed, um, T prime is not necessarily Henkin theory, since the new constants lead to new sentences for which we will need new Henkin constants. So what do we do? Well, we iterate the whole extension process. We start with L and T, right? And then at the step N plus one, we just take the extension of the language first by the constant symbols, always adding new constant symbols that have not been used in LN. Right? And then take the Henkin extension for that particular uh, uh, theory TN right, to give us TN plus one. And then in the final step, we throw all of these languages together in one big language and all of these theories, theories together in one big theory T sub H. So now after iterating this whole process, we obtain this theory T sub H. And for this, it's not hard to show that this is actually a Henkin theory. We should of course 
um, verify this yourself. Take a few moments, but if you look at the definition and the process, how T sub H was defined, you will uh, see that it's, uh, uh, it's pretty straightforward to show that it's a Hankin theory. Uh, also, here, if L is a countable language, so is the extended Hankin language L sub H. The most important property besides this being Hankin is then uh, another property, property 2 here. Namely, this TH should not be um, more powerful than our original T in terms of what it can prove. Right? In particular, it should not um, be inconsistent. So if T is consistent, then T sub H should also be consistent. And one can actually show that in terms of provability, TH is not more powerful at all. It is what is called a conservative extension of T. That means for every L formula, so for every formula in the original language L, right, this formula can be proved from the new extended theory T sub H in the in the new language, the extended language L sub H, that means we have more axioms available now, logical axioms. But this is true if and only if T um, already, the original um, theory T proves phi within the uh, original language L. So this fact here does not uh, seem clear at all. Right? In particular, this direction here, from here to here, because First of all, TH has more formulas than T, definitely, but it also can use the framework of the extended language. So it also has access to more axioms because those logical axioms that we can build from the additional symbols in L sub H. So there we have to actually have some work to do. And um, for this proof of two, we first look at some basic facts about extension of theories in general. Namely, assume we have a language L prime that extends a language L. Then it holds that for any L theory T, so any T uh, over the basic language L, and any phi, it holds that T proves phi over the extended language L prime, meaning it can use potentially use more powerful axioms, right, that uh, arise from the use of more symbols in L prime, right? But this is actually T proves phi within this extended language L prime, if and only if uh, it already proves it um, over the old language, the original language L. So in words, if we only extend a language without adding new axioms, Right, uh, to uh, our theory T, right? then we cannot prove any additional formulas. A semantic proof of this is easy. So we've actually already seen this uh, when we talked about uh, structures and semantics. Right? There we simply worked with uh, redux and expansions of structures. So we noted that we have an L prime structure by restricting it to uh, this, uh, uh, the symbols that actually occur in L, right? we obtain an L structure. And um, so the semantic proof is, is rather easy for this fact, but the problem is, of course, we don't have the completeness theorem yet. right? So we cannot rely on this semantic proof right, to give us this. Only once we have proved the completeness theorem, we could make such a conclusion here. So we have to really prove this syntactically, right? So in the syntactic proof is, as we already observed, not trivial, since an L prime proof could use the additional symbols, and hence the additional formulas in over L prime, even if those do not show up in the final formula phi that we want to prove, but they could show up during the proof. In the following, I'll go over the basic ideas to prove this fact about um, extension of languages, right, with respect to provability, um, there will be a lot of details missing. And uh, as usual, you're encouraged to um, 
work out the details yourself. And in, in this case, it's I think it's really important that you try to do it. If you want to make your life a little easier, uh, note that for the proof of the Henkin extension theorem, we only need to deal with languages that add new constant symbols. So you may not you may discard the cases where your extended language L prime here contains relation or new relation or new function symbols, because in, if you're only interested in the Henkin case here, we only added uh, constant symbols to our language. So you can focus on that case if you want to make your life a little bit easier. But I'm going to give the idea for, for the general proof here. So the, and the idea is to replace any symbols that do not belong to L by a harmless variable Y. So namely given an L prime formula Psi, let Psi sub Y be the formula obtained as follows. So now we need to turn this into an, into an L formula. So if we have a constant symbol that is not in L, but in L prime, we'll just replace C by Y. So if you do uh, the Henkin, only focus on the Henkin case, you're already done. So you only, that's the only case you need to consider, right? Well, if we have um, a function application here, we just replace all of that function term here by Y2. And if we have a relation symbol, right, uh, a relation atomic formula, we just replace this by the formula of Y equals Y. So very harmless indeed looking. Now, once you have done this substitution, so you've defined Psi sub Y from Psi, which by the way, we set this up, Psi sub Y is clearly an L formula, right? Now we show that for all L prime formulas Psi, the following holds. For all but finitely many y, if t proves psi over L prime, then it t proves psi sub y over L. Now, once you've done this substitution, so once you've defined for every L for prime formula psi and L formula psi sub y, and it's not hard to see that psi sub y is indeed an L formula, right? You go on and show that the following holds. For all but finitely many uh, y, so and you do this for every psi, for all but finitely many y, if t proves psi over L prime, then t proves psi sub y over L. And then if you note that for L formulas psi, Psi is actually equal to Psi sub y, because we don't have to do any of those substitutions there, right? This is, this is sufficient. This is precisely what we want to do then, right? And you prove this fact star here, right? By induction on the length of a proof. And recall, if you're only interested in proving two of the extension theorem for Henkin uh, theories, you can assume that the only new symbols are constants. Otherwise, you have to m deal with a few more cases, but you should definitely try both. Now that we are equipped with this result about provability from theories with respect to extension of languages and only extension of languages, right? we can now prove this fact the two here, namely for every L formula phi, so for every formula in the basic language. This formula is provable over the extended Henkin language from the extended Henkin theory, if and only if phi is already provable from T over the original language L. So the way you do this is that you show that if you can prove phi over L, L sub H from T sub H, so from the Henkin theory, then you can prove it from the original theory over the Henkin language. And then apply the previous result about extensions of languages, because then we know that if we can prove something from uh, a th phi from the theory T over the Henkin language, then we uh, can already prove it over our original language. So this property plus here, right, is actually the crucial fact of the proof 
um, of the existence of a Henkin extension. And to show this, I'll give you again only a basic idea. I'll leave out quite a few details here. And um, I really recommend that you sit down and try to work this out yourself. It might take a few more than a few minutes, though. Um, but it's a probably a good thing to think about this for, uh, for a little bit. So let's assume that we can prove phi over L sub h from T sub h. By the definition, the way that we defined T sub h by an iterative extension of T, we can find finitely many sentences, right? Because this is a proof. So there's only finitely many of the extended sentences that we end added to the uh, theory over the course of this definition here. There exist finitely many sentences, sigma sub i, and each of them are the form of those Henkin extension witnesses, right? Um, such that T proves uh, over LH, the conjunction of the sigma i implies phi. So once you have that, now the crucial part of the proof will be to show inductively that we can successively eliminate all the sigma i and obtain then, so if we, go, we can go from here to here, so we can prove, we can get rid of sigma 1, then we get rid of sigma 2, and so on. We get rid of all the sigma i's, and finally we get rid of sigma n to get uh, uh, the desired result, namely that t um, proves phi over L sub h. Right. The process is similar for each of these steps here. So the so essentially you just need to figure out how to get from here to here. It's not many steps, but there's one little trick in there that might prove a little difficult. But uh, give it a try.